Hey folks, Eric Scheidel here, the HVAC Service Mentor. And I'd like to ask you a quick question. When was the last time you thought about your multimeter test leads? That's right, your multimeter test leads could very well be the most neglected tool you have and one of the most important tools that you own. Uh, so stick around with me and I'll give you the quick instructions on how to test and inspect your meter leads for ultimate accuracy and safety. So let me start off with a quick story on how this came to be. I was standing at the uh, in line at the supply house one day and one of my buddies walked in and uh, he had this really strange look on his face. He looked freaked out. His eyes were all big. He looked uncomfortable. He was kind of nervous and this guy is usually cool as a cucumber and I says, hey, what's happening, man? What you doing? And he says, look, and he's holding a pair of test leads in his hand and he bends one over like this and I can see that there's a nick in the insulation and you can see the bare wire inside and his eyes got big and he said 480. And what meant what he meant was that he was testing on a 480 volts and that little nick that was in there that he didn't notice allowed some voltage to bleed through into his hand. Uh, fortunately, at 480 volts, that was just a tickle, enough to wake him up because 480 volts is deadly lethal voltage. And um, it really occurred to me that it would be a really good idea to share with folks how to test your meter leads. And now think about it, right? A service technician is going to use a multimeter on a daily basis, multiple times a day. And these leads, while the multimeters are often very rugged, the leads are vulnerable. They're suspect, they're able to be damaged, and they're frequently going to accumulate unseen damage that will affect your accuracy without you even knowing it. So uh, let me uh, move my camera around and I'm going to give you a demonstration on how to test and inspect your meter leads. But before I do that, I want to take a minute to remind you uh, to uh, go ahead and hit the like button on this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. So every time we upload a new instructional video, you will get a notification in your inbox. Okay, so first I'm going to demonstrate an inspection using my trusty Fluke 87-5. And I've got a fairly new uh, pair of test leads on here, but what you'll want to do is just kind of give a good look. Make sure that your uh, finger guards are in place and that they're there. If you're using meter leads that don't have finger guards, I strongly recommend that you have some. It's going to help make sure that you help keep your fingers away from the metal part of the probe. The last thing I want to see is techs using their meter probes like this. That is a problem. But then we just go along the lead and do some gentle bends where uh, things are suspect and likely to be damaged and look for any of those nicks in the uh, insulation. Uh, look along the entire length of the lead. Make sure you don't see any um, abrasions, cuts, nicks, melted parts from getting hot and all the way down to the banana plug end and look at it as well. And like I said, these leads are in pretty good condition. And that's pretty easy. That's something that you can do on a, on a daily inspection type of basis or anytime you pull your meters out for use. Now for testing. To test a meter lead, we're going to test for resistance. And uh, what we want to look for is to just do a quick test of the resistance of the leads. We adjust our, me our, our meter to measure ohms and then just test the leads together. And when you want to do this, you put them together firmly so that they're not, you know, just kind of loosely hanging together, but really kind of connect them together and put some pressure on them. And right here we see a measurement of two tenths of an ohm. And that's just about right. When we start getting a resistance reading that is greater than two tenths of an ohm, now we're starting to see hidden damage in our test meter leads uh, or our meter test leads 
and we would want to start thinking about replacing those leads because that will begin to affect accuracy and it will also um, it's the uh, I guess the um, the pre-warning of a hazardous condition so now I've got my testo and uh, these are still the original leads that came with the testo um, I haven't had this meter for very long um, maybe a couple of years and um, the leads are still in good physical condition the inspection looks good let's see how they look on the resistance test putting that pressure on there we're getting about a 0.09 to a 0.12 that is doing really well that's ideal okay so now I've got a uh, also just a couple of years old Amprobe all-in-one clamp meter and the physical inspection on, on these test leads looks really good as well uh, there's no obvious physical damage uh, but check out what I noticed on this when I tested them doing the ohms test pushing them together real good here I've got a 1.5 resistance measurement 1.5 ohms and that's just the leads themselves you know these are standard length test leads four or five feet long these leads one of them or maybe two of them have a problem they're starting to accumulate more resistance now when these were new they were down at around that 0 0.2 0 0.15 neighborhood uh, and this guy here is 1.5 now so these meter leads are due to be replaced let's see if we can figure out which one of the two it is so I'm going to disconnect the uh, black lead. I'm going to test the red lead by itself by simply plugging it right in. So the red lead is showing up at 0.1 ohms. Let's see what the uh, black lead tests as by itself. One point seven, one point six. The black lead is the culprit. So now I know which one is my problem child. It's the black one. Okay, so there you have it. A very quick, fast, and easy way to test and inspect your meter leads to verify that they are in structurally sound and electrically accurate. Remember, you trust your life to this meter on a daily basis. And not only that, but your customers trust your recommendations based on what that meter tells you. And so it makes good sense to ensure that it is as accurate as possible. And remember, even the best meter can be rendered useless with a pair of test leads that don't measure up. So let me know in the comments below um, if you've ever had any unique challenging experiences with failed meter leads or been tickled by 480 volts. And while you're at it, don't forget to uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell. And before I forget to mention, don't forget to go to www.hvacservicementor.com and check out what we've got available for different training options. I hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching.